So uh, the latest uh, updates on our first pregnancy is uh, some warning news. On um, January the 11th, our uh, surrogate Mary was going in for her visit and an ultrasound, and they determined that uh, there is a velamentous cord insertion, uh, which, which again is worrying news. Uh, basically, normally the umbilical cord from the uh, baby goes directly into the placenta and directly connects to it. And so the blood vessels coming from the baby are protected by the outer casing of the umbilical cord until it reaches and enters the placenta. With velamentous cord insertion, the uh, umbilical cord inserts into the um, amniotic sac, as it were, and then blood vessels have to stretch from the end of the umbilical cord to the placenta. And because of this, there are these exposed blood vessels, and um, these can lead to complications. Uh, so most likely, as stated by this article, uh, the absolute incidence of most of the adverse perinatal outcomes among pregnancies with VCI was generally low, which basically means that the most likely outcome is everything will be fine. So keep that in mind as I go through possible complications. Most likely outcome, everything will be fine. Uh, however, uh, one possibility is during the third trimester, as things get a little more crowded within the uterus, uh, there's a greater risk of compression of blood vessels during third trimester. And if these blood vessels are compressed, that means there is reduced blood flow to the developing fetus so that it will potentially develop slower so that even if you have a delivery at full term, there'll be a low birth weight and a low EPGAR score, which is basically how they determine how healthy the newborn is. And if that happens, then the uh, baby, even though full term, might need to go into neonatal care. Um, Compression during third trimester might be severe enough that it's determined that they need a preterm delivery so that the uh, baby can get sufficient nutrients um, outside of the womb. And of course, compression means there could be reduced oxygen flow leading to hypoxia, which of course can lead to other complications, brain damage, fetal death. I mean, you can go down the rabbit hole of possible complications. Um, Overall, these instances of these things possibly occurring is about two to three times more likely than in a pregnancy without VCI, but, you know, it is worrying. So what can we do? Well, basically increased monitoring of fetal development. So more ultrasounds during the three, third trimester to see that the uh, fetus is developing as expected. Also, there could be regular non-stress testing of fetal oxygen levels. Um, some kind of belt that's measuring uh, fetal activity is placed around um, the woman. Again, both of these monitoring approaches are non-invasive, so they do not increase any risks to the fetus. And again, if there are issues, then it may require a preterm delivery sometime after 34 weeks. Another complication could be vasoprevia, um, which is found to occur about 6% of the time in pregnancies where VCI has been um, detected. So again, normally umbilical cord goes directly into the placenta. With velamentous cord insertion, there is these exposed blood vessels. If there's also vasoprevia, then the blood vessels actually are between the baby and the cervix the way out during delivery. And that is not good because the beginning of contractions, beginning of delivery uh, would lead to rupturing of these blood vessels, or as they said in one of the papers, dramatic increase of fatal fetal exsanguination during vaginal delivery. Uh, and so that phrase there, fatal fetal exsanguination, is going to um, Give me some nightmares, but again, 
only 6% of the time, and we will look for it. We will look for it via ultrasound, uh, specifically transvaginal ultrasound. And if it is present, then there will be a preterm delivery sometime after 34 weeks, and it will have to be cesarean to avoid, of course, rupturing the blood vessels. And then, of course, during delivery, there is an increased risk of compression of blood vessels, which can lead to abnormal fetal heart rate, can lead to, again, hypoxia, uh, oxygen deprivation, which could lead to brain damage, fetal death, again, this rabbit hole of possible complications. And basically, the response to this is that, of course, during delivery, they will be monitoring the activity, the uh, health of the fetus. And if it seems to be suspect, they'll engage in an emergency C-section, which is something that happens often enough that um, hospitals are set up for that sort of thing, and it would happen really quickly. Other possible complications, uh, placental abruption. So it's possible that the placenta will start to separate prematurely, which would lead to hemorrhaging, which, of course, is not healthy for the fetus, but also not healthy for the woman, not healthy for um, Mary. Uh, another possibility, there's an increased risk of preeclampsia, which is not at all a good uh, occurrence. And one way to get an idea if that is occurring is uh, because a woman suffering from this uh, condition would have high blood pressure and um, the only way to resolve that issue is, again, preterm delivery. Um, after the, another complication, after the um, baby is born, the placenta might not be expelled and then require a manual extraction of the placenta. And though they don't really talk about it, obviously, if there's an increased risk of hemorrhaging or preeclampsia, then that means there is an increased risk of the death of the woman, which, of course, we don't want. And um, so in the U.S., 17.4 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births, which is 0.0174%. So if we go with the statistics I read of two to three times more likely, then that brings it up to what, 0.05%. Again, highly unlikely, but, you know, we want to not that to happen. So uh, increased monitoring, of course, of the woman's health, um, especially blood pressure um, during the pregnancy, especially any occurrence of vaginal bleeding, um, and of course, the rigorous uh, monitoring of the woman's health during delivery that they always do. Um, so yeah, a lot of possible complications, but again, most important thing to remember is that we uh, can try to prevent those complications from occurring via increased monitoring the development of the fetus, uh, determining if vasoprevia is present, being mentally prepared for a possible emergency C-section during delivery, and having any possible preemptive preparations in the delivery room, maybe having uh, Mary having an IV set or I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but we're going to ask if there's anything that can be done to speed an emergency C-section if it's necessary. And, of course, being mentally prepared for the uh, baby spending time in neonatal intensive care. But again, the most important thing to remember is Likely, how come is it everything will be fine? So that's just what I have to remember is everything. Everything's most likely going to be fine. 